Hello everyone, welcome to Franklin Park Zoo. My name is Nicole, I'm a keeper here in the Hooves and Horns Department. And today we're celebrating World Porcupine Day with our two Cape porcupines, Penelope and Kiazi. And today what we've done for them to celebrate is we've set out some enrichment or some toys for them to interact with. We've got some boxes with produce in them. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. It looks like so far they want to check out their log. I just let them out. So usually uh, when they come out, they want to explore their whole exhibit, but they do enjoy their log. But there's some produce out there that hopefully they'll interact with and some biscuits. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, I'm available to answer them for you. Just type them on in the chat. Um, we can enjoy these guys. It looks like someone already found a biscuit. So on our left-hand side here facing us is Kiazi. He's our male. He's 15 years old. And on the right, we have Penelope, and she is seven years old. She actually looks a little bit bigger, and that's because she is. Uh, typically for these guys, uh, females are a little bit larger than the males. It's not uncommon. So what they're doing right now is they're foraging, looking for their snacks. And as they walk around, definitely get a look at all those quills they have. One of the main misconceptions about these guys is that they shoot their quills. That is not the case. Instead, they'll fluff up and make their quills really big and stand up, and then they'll back into a threat. But that's usually, they'll usually give you a little bit of a warning sign first, so they're gonna shake their tail, and it actually makes a rattle noise, just kind of like a baby rattle, and that kind of lets you know to back off. They'll also stomp their back feet, which is not super intimidating to us. We think it's pretty adorable, actually, but it's, it is a warning signal uh, because ideally they don't want to be using their quills because uh, they want to be able to save them for moments that really matter where they really need them. And they are chewing away at those biscuits. You might even hear that crunching. These guys are serious chewers. That is one of the main things that they like to do. Mm -hmm. So for enrichment, we also like to give them different logs and sticks to chew on. In their natural environment, these guys would be eating roots and they'd be eating bulbs and bark. So we want to keep them busy that way. And when you visit the zoo, the best time to see them is early, early in the morning or maybe towards the end of the day because they're what you call crepuscular. And then also sometimes they are active at night. It kind of depends on the level of activity people-wise. Sometimes they're more driven to be more nocturnal. What kinds of porcupines are they? What kinds of porcupines are these? These guys are Cape porcupines. Uh, they are found in the southern part of Africa. We have porcupines uh, native to North America. Those are the North American porcupines, but believe it or not, they are completely different species, and they're not really that related to each other either, even though they both have quills. That was kind of a characteristic that was developed independently, and it's called convergent. Uh, which is pretty cool. They're, these guys are actually more related to an agouti or a guinea pig, which is pretty fascinating. I know a lot of families probably have a little guinea pigs at home. These guys are rodents. And they look like they're digging into those boxes now. So in there, there should be some produce, but they're using their natural behaviors like digging and chewing and using their teeth to get in there, which we always want to promote. These guys are excellent diggers. They're burrowers. A lot of times they'll be opportunistic and steal someone else's burrow, but they'll also dig their own, and that's kind of where they're going to rest. They're not arboreal, or they don't spend time in the trees like the North American porcupines uh, you find up in uh, maybe Maine. Do you, North American porcupines have similar quills? Do North American porcupines have similar quills? Um, some of them, I'd say the North American porcupine quills are a little bit different. They're a little bit, the ones that are going to do the damage are a little bit shorter and they're covered in like a layer of more hair-like quills. I actually have quills in my hand here if you wanted to get a closer look. Um, these guys have more thicker, longer quills. We've got this one here. And then we've got a more hair-like one. This is kind of like their Afro hairdo quill. Uh, it's a little bit thinner. It's not going to do any damage. And they've got uh, some shorter ones as well. That these, This one probably came from the tail. Uh, so a little bit different, but the same concept. Some are, they're kind of almost hollowy. They're very, very light. You might expect them to be pretty thick. And baby porcupines are actually born with their quills. They're just very soft when they're born, and then the quills harden up. 
um, the, after a few hours or so. Penelope and Chiazzi actually did have a few offspring. I think it was about a year and a half, two years ago now. They had two babies, uh, affectionately named Pink and Blue, and they went on to have their own families, which we're very happy about. Are they part of a species survival plan? Are these guys part of a species survival plan? They are. Uh, these guys, a species survival plan, if you don't know, is a program where a lot of facilities interact and work together to create a genetically diverse population. And that way, um, we ensure that the population is healthy and that there's plenty of animals to go to the right places and we don't have a surplus. But the more important part is the genetics and making sure that if we ever needed to, we could reintroduce populations into their natural environment and they'd be. Looks like they're enjoying their snacks, which is always the goal. Some other things that they like, they like some ice treats. So today is pretty warm. Uh, so we'll freeze maybe some produce in some water or maybe a big slab of it that they can lay on and they really like that to cool off on the hot days. What does their daily diet look like? What does their daily diet look like? So these guys will get a biscuit, which you might be able to see in there, and it's kind of compact with all these different nutrients that they need to give them a well-balanced diet, and they get a chow as well. They get some produce, so they like their greens, they like kale, they also give them collards. They have sweet potato and apple, uh, and then we'll also give them some bonus treats sometimes too that are special just for training. Um, and then they also get some sticks, leaves, and branches. Here at the zoo we have a what we call browse program where browse is basically any plant matter sticks with leaves on them is ideal and we'll cut sticks and leaves throughout the summer and we'll even save some uh, and freeze it so that over the winter all our animals can get fresh greens as well. We actually partner with a lot of landscaping companies um, and that's kind of how we're doing our part as well because a lot of the plants that our animals like are actually invasive and not good for the environment like Japanese knotweed so the companies will cut that down for us and donate it and we can freeze it and then the animals will have something good to eat over the winter that was a good question another question was asking if they get dental work on a regular basis do they get dental work so they don't typically get dental work we're always looking so I was talking about that training program so they have what you call a chute, which is a tiny little hallway, and they can walk into that and get nice and close to us. And ideally, we're able to touch different parts of their body or get a good look at their mouth. Uh, we were concerned someone had an abscess not too long ago, and we were able to monitor that. Um, and if we needed to, we could do a physical exam. They do get routine physical exams uh, every maybe two or so years where they'll go to sleep for a little bit. We can do some dental work if needed, maybe remove some tartar. Um, but typically, we do a lot of preventative work. Um, through training, which is really nice. They get on the scale. Uh, if you're interested in how much they weigh, Kiazi is, uh, I believe he's around 35-ish pounds, and Penelope, who as I was mentioning in the beginning, is a little bit larger, typical for female. She's about 41 pounds. She's typical weight for them. Any recommendations or advice for what to do if people encounter porcupines in the wild? If people uh, encounter porcupines in the wild, I definitely recommend giving them space. Um, the North American species moves a little bit slower, so just give them plenty of space and watch them from a distance. Um, typically, they're probably going to be in a tree. Um, these guys run pretty quick, but so you probably want to give them even more uh, of a wider berth and just listen to their signs and their body language. We talked a little bit before about, you know, they, if they're upset, they're going to be stomping. They might wait, raise their quills up in the air. Um, so just pay attention to that. And if you feel like you might be upsetting any wildlife, really, make sure you give it plenty of space and distance. And observing from afar, you'll be able to see a lot more of their natural behaviors because they're more comfortable. They'll be foraging. They'll be interacting with each other. And those are more interesting behaviors to see than them looking at you maybe like they're afraid or nervous. So it's better to give them space. Oh, no. One more question, how long do they typically live? So Cape porcupines in their natural environment might live 13 to 14 years. In human care, they tend to live 
quite a bit longer. Um, Kiazi, like I said, is 15, and um, we have we had an individual who lived into her 20s, which is really, really impressive and a testament to how well we're able to care for them here at the zoo. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Penelope and Kiazi. Make sure you come back and see them in person, and enjoy World Porcupine Day. Bye, guys.